Welcome to Ipswich Living. I'm your host, Amelia DeVita. This week, in our journey across Ipswich, we stop at Division 3. On today's show, we'll, we'll talk to Councillor Victor Atwood on the sporting community in his division, and we'll also talk to Christine McDonald, Pastor Paulo and Carrie Silva, who ran the evacuation centre during the recent floods, as well as Trevor Gardner and Gillian Lynn, who have led the community gardens restoration after the floods. But first, here's a brief introduction to what Division 3 holds. Division 3 of Ipswich covers the suburbs of Redbank Plains, Collingwood Park and Riverview. At the 2006 census, the division represented 9.99% of the total Ipswich population. The average age of the residents is 31 years old, with 40% of the people being under 25 years of age. The division has a variety of recreational activities for the population to keep them entertained. Earlier in the week, we caught up with Division Councillor Victor Atwood at the Red Bank Recreational Reserve, which has just undergone upgrades. He talked to us about the division and its large sporting community that they have. Hello, my name is Victor Atwood. I'm the Council for Division 3 in Ipswich City Council. I'm also the Deputy Mayor. The area that I represent encompasses Collingwood Park, most of the Red Bank Plains and the southern part of Riverview. My division is one of the youngest divisions in Ipswich and population wise. And because of that we have a lot of um, young people here so we try to provide a lot of sporting facilities for them. We also try to um, encourage people to use those facilities. We're at the Red Bank Plains Rec Reserve where council has just spent over three million dollars doing upgrades on soccer and rugby league facilities for young people and for our residents to use. There's about 30 um, soccer teams up here and about 260 rugby league players play up here every week. So it's quite an integral part of our community. We also provide skating facilities in, um, in this part of Ipswich for the kids who want to do skateboarding, ride uh, little scooters and BMX tracks. And there's a BMX track in this facility and a skateboard facility. There's also one at Riverview and one in Collingwood Park at Goupon Park. This is of course a rapidly growing area. This is the fastest growing suburb in Ipswich at the moment. It's, um, in the last 12 months it's outpaced Springfield Lakes with nearly a thousand residents moving into just into Red Bank Plains. So we're really aware of the pressures that um, come under sporting facilities which is why we're continually upgrading it. Council recently adopted a 10 year plan for the upgrade of the rec reserve and part of that plan involves a cycleway that runs through the reserve which is the first stage of the Goodner Creek bikeway which will run from Red Bank train station through to Red Bank Plains High School and that will cost over two million dollars. The next um, stage of the upgrade here will be um, a green spine that runs through the middle of the centre, also um, the AFL club, a lobbying council currently for, a, for a, um, a clubhouse similar to these ones and also um, I'm lobbying the council for a citywide skate park to be built in the youth space that we have here. I think that Ipswich is crying out for a citywide one, a large skate facility where you can have everything from beginners to advanced skaters and scooter riders and BMX riders to try their skills out and where um, you can not so much control what people do but monitor what they do and make sure that people behave in a responsible manner and, and ride in a responsible manner and that um, we can provide better facilities for people. Um, as you'd be aware most of the people who work in these clubs who run these areas are all volunteers. They're all the volunteer, the parents or the kids who play, people who put in countless hours of their own time to help their people in this area, for their children to be able to play sport. I particularly like to mention um, Jody Elder and Jared French from the Red Bank Plains Bears with Junior Rugby League, who've rebuilt this club who nearly collapsed three years ago to today where it has 260 players. And also, Sue Peacock and Rob Price from the Westminster Warriors Soccer Club who have been an absolutely tremendous in um, reinvigorating that club and having a new facility rebuilt after 
About 18 months ago, their clubhouse was burnt down by vandals. There are often like um, g games here on Friday nights and on the weekends of all the different sports. In the next um, week or two, given that it's Ute Week, we'll be holding skateboarding contests at um, Goupong Park and also at Maculata Park and Riverview for young people in this area to um, upgrade their skills and, and have a great time during the school holidays and during Ute Week. This is a very multicultural division. The eastern end of Ipwich is very multicultural, has a lot of different ethnic backgrounds. There's over 80 different ethnic groups that live in this area. Currently one of the um, coaches here at the Red Bank Plains Bears Rugby League is Danny Moore, who plays State of Origin football for Queensland, plays for our Manly in the NRL. He coaches the under 17. So we have that kind of people come here and want to help the kids. It's really great and it really lifts the whole area, it lifts the club and boosts the um, the sport in the area. Coming up after the break, we go over to the Riverview Community Centre and talk about the role it played during the floods. Welcome back. Our next story is about the Riverview Community Centre and its role during the recent floods. Christine McDonald, Pastor Paulo and Kerry Silva led the evacuation centre as a community pulled together to help those that were affected by the floods and the work that they are still doing for those who are in the process of restarting their lives. phone call from Kerry about seven o'clock Tuesday night. So open. I've spoken to Paula, he's on his way. Um, we met here, opened up, we had our first evac about half past eight, nine o'clock. Um, the three of us plus um, Clifford Muir um, started door knocking. We were door knocking. Well we were going back until about three o'clock mm. that morning yeah. and making sure everyone was all right, slowly watching it all rise. Um, and then sort of went from there, become an entity of its own. We had, you've done, you've done this, um, statistics. Yeah, we've, we've probably did about, over the whole evacuation and recovery, we probably did about 4,000 meals through here because we'd obviously, when there was no power or anything like that, um, for the whole community, you know, there wasn't, and people were losing food and stuff like that. So what we had was a lot of people bringing their food here and then we would be cooking it up, you know, people were just emptying their fridges and stuff up for the um, evacuees, but also so they could have something to eat as well. Um, I think we did, we've done oh, probably more than 450 um, food hampers and care packages. We had about 70 people sleeping here at the time. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. Um, you know, ranging from thing. singles, youth, um, families. Well, it was, a, it was a good response from the community. We, uh, they certainly know where the community centre is, and uh, it's good to see that they, that they all came here, and uh, most of them, a lot of them came to volunteer and to help out oh, yeah. in, in any way that they, they can and uh, it, was so good. it was so good to see the community pulled together. Um, you know. We'd have day, you know, you'd, you'd see stuff like a truck would just pull up and, you know, or people would just be walking in with, you know, boxes of fruit or things like that because, and they just knew that people needed to be fed so everyone was sharing every resource that they had, you know, people were you know, we met Heidi, you know, like Heidi and Annie, I mean, I know you knew Annie, but Heidi, um, she just came down, she'd finish with her family about eight o'clock at night and come down and start cleaning and things like that for us. So it was just amazing to see the community pull together. There would be literally 400 people coming into this building every day, sort of thing, you know, and needing different levels of support. Some people, you know, just needed to sit down and have somewhere to go, you know, because it was all, you know, when they're out there trying to clean out their houses and stuff, this was a, another point where they could come to and, and it was away from all of that. It was away from the mud and the dirt, 
they could have a clean shower, they could have a cup of tea and they can have a laugh, you know, sort of thing and, and share stories or, you know, find out if, you know, friends and other people that they knew, how they were as well, you know, so. And even like, after the power came on, we were still doing breakfast, lunch and dinners yeah. for about, I think, three weeks. Yeah. yeah. And that, and we were still doing lunches right up until... We closed as a recovery centre. We still had people coming in that were doing their houses, coming in for lunch, and it was it. Honestly, it was it was it was a really bad situation. But mm. I think this place made it a, a, yeah. a good place to be. I think we're thankful for a lot of uh, support from the council, yes. uh, from our local member, federal, yeah. Shane Newman and, and yeah. Victor, yeah. our local council. They, and, you know, Shane was really here great. the next day, Shane Newman was here the next day, um, Victor, Joanne was here, Joanne, yes. and that. so we had a lot of support and I think the other little organisations that sprung up just didn't have that support, mm. but we did, we had a lot of support. Amazing to see, really. Yeah, I think it's, Australians just have such yeah. A, yeah. an amazing ability to pull together. You know, we we really do are there to support each other. We all go about our normal everyday lives, but when I, I could use a phrase, but when it all hits the fan, you know, we all just come yeah. back together and go. You know, this is what's really important. So, and that's what we've seen from day one. Is, you know, first the community, and then it went outside of the community. I'd like to thank uh, Pastor, Pastor Don from the Gleaners, uh, Gudna Gleaners. Uh, he came here with his truck numerous yes, yes. times delivering yeah. coal stuff, uh, non-perishable stuff and uh, even from their, their own store at Gudna because they, they were flooded, they were cut off. So uh, they gave us uh, a lot of their stuff and so thank you Pastor Don. I'd also like to thank uh, Pastor John Ladder and his team from Mount Tambourine. Uh, from the Christian Life churches up there, they came and uh, they helped us in the streets. They with their gurneys and and all their cleaning gear. Thank you guys for your your dedication and your just love for people. Uh, thank you, Pastor John, for taking the initiative and for that great help you you gave us. And I'd also like to thank uh, Renee, Renee from Two Five Six. Renee, Renee and Joe yeah. from Two Five Six uh, Brisbane Terrace, Terrace. There, thank you for. Uh, for supporting us and fruit, all the stuff, fruit, fresh fruit, and, fresh fruit yes. and everything that you gave yeah. us, uh, it was it yeah. really uh, helped us in the, in the long run. And uh, I'd like to thank for those families Let me just who Cheryl Brearley from um, from Redcliffe Red area. Cliff, Cheryl, yes. Cheryl did an amazing job, yeah. and um, you know put ads in the newspaper and things like that to ask people over mm. that way to donate furniture and clothes, uh, not so much clothing but you know household items yeah, as well I think we're a bit with over the kipper ring yeah. yeah but she did plates yeah. and all sorts of toys yeah. and stuff for kids and stuff yeah. so and for the uh, Watson family for their donation as well yeah. oh, a lot yeah. of people gave us donation uh, monetary yeah. yeah we just want to thank them for their kindness and uh, Woolworths and Ipswich, they, they clean their shelves out and um, I think Shane organised that, they cleaned their shelves out because they were totally flooded and we ended up with all the food and non-perishables and that. While interviewing Councillor Victor Atwood, he had this to say on the efforts of the evacuation centre. Christine McDonald and Paul O'Paulo Kerry Silver, who organised the evacuation centre there, I think, are real heroes of the floods in Ipswich. They housed 40 families, they fed over 400 people most days for over two weeks as people came into this area from, particularly from Goodner and from Norku Vale, looking for somewhere they could get some assistance. The whole effort of that community was absolutely outstanding and I think they should all receive medals from the Premier's Flood Relief and Medal Scheme. It truly was an amazing job that those three did and there are many more people out there who helped who haven't been mentioned but we thank them too. 
After the break, we'll head out to the West Farland Community Gardens and talk to Trevor and Gillian about the floods and how the restoration effort is going. Welcome back. There are a few events currently on and coming up soon in the Ipswich area. Let's take a look. The workshop's Rail Museum signature annual event, Day Out with Thomas, returns to delight audiences. Sir Topham Hatt, the Fat Controller, and Thomas the Tank Engine himself will be visiting the workshop Rail Museum. So come along and join in in all the fun with storytelling and activities for all. It's on now and until the 2nd of May from 9.30am to 5pm at the workshop Rail Museum, North Street, North Ipswich. For more information, go to theworkshops.qm.qld.gov.au or phone 3432. Ipswich City Council is excited to present the inaugural showcase of the arts in Ipswich through Art Beat Festival 2011. The event will showcase the cel and celebrate traditional and contemporary arts, craft, performances and arts information through interactive arts, performances, displays, sales and information. It's on April 30th from 10am to 2pm at Browns Park, the 29th Down Street, North Ipswich. For more information, call Wendy on 3810-6652. Come and be a part of Ipswich's newest and most exciting recreational space, Rebel Domain, when it is officially opened on Sunday the 29th of May 2011. It is the $30 million recreational hub set on 487 hectares of parkland. The park will open to the public from 9am with kids rides, roving performers and activities. The official opening is on between 11am and 12 noon with live entertainment from 12 noon, with feature performances from Joe, Camilleri and the Black Sorrows. It finishes with a spectacular sound and light show and fireworks at 6.20. Make sure you head in to see this event as it will be a fantastic day out. As we now enter the school holidays, the Ipswich City Council have organised Active Breaks. Active Breaks is to get kids between 5 and 17 organised sporting events to attend during the, the school break. Here is a list of sports involving netball, AFL, rugby league, skate comps and more. To find the schedule, go to ipswich.qld.gov.au and follow the Active Breaks link or contact the council on 3102 5438. There's no bookings required. Our last story takes us to the West Farland Community Gardens. Earlier in the week, we interviewed President of the Gardens, Trevor Gardner, and Publicity Officer, Gillian Lynn, on the effects the flooding had on the gardens and the community's effort to restore the gardens. Well, they affected us in three or four different ways. Um, firstly, uh, by losing a lot of equipment, and um, secondly, by being all over the top of the gardens and washing gardens away and uh, equipment away. Um, and then um, thirdly, I would say um, it set us back probably five years from where we were. Um, and. Uh, so sitting there looking at the garden, we were thinking that maybe it was finished, but then thought, no, it's got to continue. So um, we just decided to get stuck into it and get it all up and running again and get everything replaced. And um, as you can see where we are, you know, six to eight weeks down the track, we're, we're just over the moon, aren't we? Yeah. Absolutely over the moon. And that's uh, that we're back running again. So their chickens was just, it was just, just heartbreaking. And I think all 70 chickens had names too, didn't they? Oh, just about. <laughs> <laughs> and we lost them, they went back to roost and they drowned. And it was really, really sad because I'd had them since they were just very little tiny chickens, little ones. Yeah. It also affected us being able to help charities in the area uh, with by supplying food and um, vegetable, fresh vegetables and herbs and fruit, um, but we'll get back to doing that and uh, that won't be that far down the track. Um, probably in the next couple of months we'll be able to get back to doing that, which is what we like doing. It's part of the garden's heritage and um, we'll, with the crew we've got and all the help we've had, we'll probably come back bigger and better. If you had have seen this after the water had gone down, it was just brown mud. Um, 
and you just couldn't yeah. stay on your feet. Yeah. I, uh, I actually drove down and came up around the back way and drove in through on the grass and stopped and had a look. And I sat up the, up the top there and I had a couple of tears in the eyes because I was like, oh God. <laughs> yeah, well Graham and I stood up there and I said to him, what do we do? Do we walk away? He said, that would be easy. Mm. <laughs> So we took we took the hard way out. We decided not to not to walk away, to rebuild, um, and I'm, I'm glad we did. The first thing we needed to do was go through everything that was all over the garden. Nothing was in its place when we left, um, and then once the flood came in, and then when the water left, everything was everywhere. So we just had to go through everything and um, throw out most of our paperwork, all our books, all our um, awards, all our photographs were gone of the garden, its heritage, um, all our uh, power tools were washed away, mowers, lots and lots of equipment that we had accumulated to make us very independent um, and to be able to do everything we want to do. Um, so that really was a, a big um, part of the area that um, we didn't know how we were going to come back from that. Um, how we were going to get the equipment um, or you know just whether anyone would help us but then as we got into the cleanup we had uh, companies coming in we had electrical trade union come in we had um, a company from us which called custom furniture they came in and helped we had individual people coming off the street didn't we and asking if they could help and help clean up um, we had lots of help from Riverview House, um, with Christine and Kerry, and um, they're still helping us with different things. Um, and just, you know, it just was mind blowing to see the amount of people that came in and helped us. People we didn't know, uh, had no idea uh, who they were, but they were there to help us. We had, um, who was the electrical company that came in? Nielsen. Nielsen's Nielsen. electricals came in mm. out of nowhere. They just arrived and said, we're here to do all your electrics. Yeah. Um, and they did all the electrics, plus they added a few extra power points for us. So the generosity you know, uh, was just incredible. I kept saying at the end of the day, thank you. And then I'd get home and think, geez, you know, thank you didn't seem to be quite sufficient. Um, I thought there should have been something more I could say, but um, but there wasn't. They were all quite happy with me saying thank you, and Gillian saying thank you, and Graham, and all the rest of our committee. West Farland Community Gardens will be holding a car boot sale on the 29th of May starting at 8am. A second one will take place on the 31st of July, so if you can't make it to the first one, you'll get another chance. If you're interested in going out to the gardens for a morning tea, that can be arranged by calling Trevor on 0419 717 901 and the cost is $5 per person and the more the merrier. Later in the year, West Farland will be holding a harvest festival. Last year they have stalls and live, live entertainment and it was a great day out. More details for this event will appear closer to September. What a great atmosphere they have down at the gardens. And if you're interested in joining the gardens, call Trevor on 0419 717 901 to discuss what size plot you're after. Memberships go for $50 or $40 for pensioners. That's all we have time for today. We hope you join us next week as we take a look into Division 4. I'm Amelia DeVita and I'll see you next time on Ipswich Living.